Hello and welcome to Alan Bits version 0.3 beta. Remember, it's in beta, so we haven't officially released yet. Uh, Alan Bits is a Lightning wallet account system that runs on top of a whole load of funding sources, standardizing their different APIs into one API, which is very good and useful for developers. Uh, we have a light and dark mode, but light mode is far too bright, so we'll stick with the dark mode. When you install LM Bits, this is the page you'll first see has a little bit of information about LM Bits, a link to the GitHub, which we'll take a look at in a moment, um, and the ability to make a wallet. So let's make a wallet, shall we? Once you've made a wallet, you'll see all the usual wallet stuff you expect to see in a Lightning wallet. Uh, it's worth bearing in mind that we haven't built into LM Bits yet a traditional login system. So in order to save your account, you just uh, bookmark this page um, and that's it so make sure you you know save this URL or bookmark the page um, let's test some of the standard functionality shall we so we'll make an invoice for 20 sats should have opened my phone before I did this here we go I'll scan that pay okay there we are that went through nice and quickly I'll send funds the other way as well so I'll make an invoice for 10 sats come on camera you can do it there we go pay nice got that it's got a couple of sats there a couple of transactions there um, we can export CSV which is useful to add it to QuickBooks for your accounts you can also export um, or view a chart, uh, which looks really naff and pointless at the moment, but I assure you when you've got more transactions, it starts to look pretty cool. Um, oh, here's a useful feature which we're going to take advantage of. You can uh, scan this QR code with a regular normal QR code scanner, and then access this web page on your phone, because LM Bits is responsive and designed to run there we go designed to run on a phone as well as in the browser um, if you want to go that extra little step you press the because uh, we can run as a web app if we press the little three dots at the top add to home screen Ben's wallet add click this thing here oh, go on, over there please okay stick it there okay now I can open this and then, boom, there's that wallet. It's like a web app, so you don't get that annoying address bar thing at the top. And again, let's go dark, shall we? So pretty cool. Um, all the wallets have their own API credentials, so own API invoice key and admin key. In fact, that was one of the reasons we first, we first started LM Bits, was if you've got something like LND and uh, you want to, you know, make an ATM for example then you would have to in order to send funds from your ATM outwards your ATM would have to store your admin macaroo so if someone got access to your ATM they could take all the funds on your node so that's, that's you know we don't want that so it makes sense to have lots of little accounts plugging into you know this one big account on your node or on your custodial funding source your open node or your LM pay or whatever so let's sort of take a little look at the API. Um, throughout LM Bits there's API details on the right hand side of, uh, of the window and there's examples um, which are pretty cool actually you can just pretty much just copy this and paste this into a terminal change the strings and it will work and then you can use that as a basis to build your applications for your get and post requests. Um, yep yeah, you can very easily make wallets as I said and then they've got different API keys to the other wallet. Uh, oh, um, one of the um, main features of Alan Bits and why people are most excited about it is the ability to very easily build extensions. So here's a whole bunch of extensions people have built to add additional functionality onto Alan Bits. Uh, a good example is TPOS. This is a very simple point of sale terminal for a bar or a cafe or something. Um, created by a developer called Tiago, there's a link to his GitHub there. Again, it has API info on how to access it through the API. 
you can make a new TPOS very easily. Uh, connected to this wallet, currency, GBP, because I'm in the UK, create TPOS. And the layout for each one of these extensions is very similar. You have this back end bit, you know, with API details and stuff, uh, with a button and usually a form to create a, you know, an instance of something. You know, that usually generates like some front end page like this. Um, and in this particular case, this is a front end page you can share because by you know by having this URL, people can't have any access to your funds. So you can share this with the staff working in your bar or cafe or what have you. Um, uh, yeah, so let's have a little look at the frameworks we're using. So one of the extensions in here is build your own, and that's got some information about the frameworks. Um, uh, we're using Quart for the back end. Quart is uh, it's a lot like Flask, so it's very very thin and lean server software. Um, but Quart, it Quart is a fork off Flask. Quart allows asynchronous communication, so it's a little bit faster. Has web sockets. Um, a little bit has a little bit more functionality and that's the back end server that's in Python so it's very easy and straightforward to kind of read through and understand what's going on the front end is using Vue.js and we um, uh, for elements you know like well the way in which my mouse is hovering over here and our little light and dark mode and our buttons and forms and what have you we're using a framework called Quasar which is really nice and this is a Vue.js framework um, so between those resources um, and this big blob of data here, this is the data which your extensions have access to. So you can, um, uh, if you build an extension, you can have access to all this data for whichever user is, is using LM bits. So pretty useful. Let's take a little look at the GitHub, shall we? Uh, so in the GitHub, you have all the usual stuff you expect to see in a GitHub, um, an install guide. Installing Bits is very simple. I won't go into too much details because uh, there's additional videos on this channel on how to install Bits in a range of different scenarios. But this is very simple. You can really just copy and paste this into a you know Ubuntu 2004 server, and uh, it'll it'll be boot up and run Bits. I think you need to install Venv additionally. I think it's apt install Python 3 hyphen Venv, but that's it. Uh, the rest of it you can just copy and paste into into your server. Um, depending on what funding source you, you are using, you might need to go through some additional steps. So you set the credentials for the funding source in a .env file, which I'll show you in a moment. Uh, but you may need to do something in the back end of the funding source, for example, LMPay, the excellent LMPay. You need to go into the back end of LMPay and add a webhook and then point it at your LMBits install. It's, it's fairly straightforward, just, just read through the documentation. Um, there's a more advanced installation, not more advanced installation, but a slightly different installation if you're developing on LMBits. This allows hot reloading, gives you a little bit more feedback in the terminal, uh, which is a little bit more useful for a developer. Although in saying that, I tend to use the other installation more often than not because it's so easy to set up. And I think that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, I was going to show you that .n file. A lot of you who have access to LMBits uh, might be doing it through Blitz or Umbrel. Um, and you won't access this file, maybe it will be taken care of for you. Uh, but for those who are installing their own LM bits, then you can access this file. You can swap out the funding sources. You can um, set where the data, the, the, the databases are saved for each one of the extensions. On the Blitz, for example, they're saved onto an external hard drive. So if something happens to the SD card, your, all your data is uh, fine and safe. There's a, a variable here where you can add so say, like I said, we're, um, we don't have a legacy login system. Uh, so you could, anyone potentially could access, you know, your LM bits install and start setting up accounts um, and using you as a custodian. They can't take any funds off you because they have to add funds before they can take funds, but you might not want to become a custodian for the rest of the world. Uh, in which case you could just take your user ID there and you can just drop it into this variable um, it's a CSV as well, so you can add multiple user accounts. Uh, for you, maybe you're just your friend. You want to be, a, you know, a custodian for your friends and family. Um, but in saying that, you know, even if you do restrict access to just you or just you and your friends and family, the front end pages like this uh, point of sale thing here, they're still accessible. They're excluded from that schema, um, which is very useful because you know you may have Alan bits running in the back end in some business, and there's a whole bunch of front end 
um, pages which you want available to people, like maybe you're minting LNURL withdrawals or something. Anyway, I, I don't want to get too um, uh, tied up in complexity because there are other videos on this channel, so check those out. There's a video for each one of these extensions. There's a video also on how to install LN bits. Um, so I think that's pretty much yeah, the end of this video. Thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, go watch the other videos, and uh, I'll see you again. Cheers, bye.